watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona 4 Cinema 4D. It is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we learn how to create a few frequently used materials in Corona. Materials like plastic, wood, concrete and metals. We have already created different subsurface scattering and glass-based materials, so we don't need to cover them in this lesson again. Open up the node material editor. And let's start with a basic plastic shader. I'm going to create a new Corona material and assign it to the shader ball. And run the interactive rendering. For a plastic shader like wood or concrete, diffuse color or texture is the most important and dominating component and for plastic it's normally a simple color. Let's go for a yellow diffuse color with the RGB values of 233, 182 and 56. As I mentioned in the reflection video a few lessons back, in Corona you can set the reflection level to 100% in almost all cases and Fresnel IOR for most opaque surfaces can be set to 1.5 to 1.6. Let's uh, use 1.6 here. And as we learned, reflection glossiness is the most important parameter that needs to be customized per material. Depending on how matte or shiny the plastic reference that you want to create, you can obviously work with the glossiness value. In this case, let's try something like 0.8. To make the surface more realistic, we do need to use a reflection glossiness map. So in the project files for this course, I have provided a lot of black and white grunge or dirt maps. In this case, let's load this BW38 map. We can connect it directly to the reflection glossiness input of the material and then start adjusting it until we get what we want. But as I'll be using this map for the bump map as well, I want to keep a raw version of it and instead connect it to a Cinema 4D filter map and connect the filter map to the reflection glossiness input. At the time being, the filter map does have some issues with the interactive rendering. Hopefully it gets solved because it's such an important map. Let's see what we get for now. I think the map is just a bit too rough. So in the filter map, Let's make the darker wall use a bit brighter, about 25% brighter. So now the surface can be less rough because the map we are using is having brighter values compared to before. Let's connect the filter map to our bump map as well. And set the bump strength to 3%. Maybe it can be lower. Let's try 2%. And the last thing would be to add some subsurface scattering to make the plastic come alive. Set the subsurface scattering mode or volumetric mode to SSS. And set the fraction amount to 1. Radius to 3, 4 centimeters. and copy the diffuse color to the scatter color and just make it less saturated with the exact RGB wall use of 233, 190, and 101. You can probably set the tiling for this texture tag to something like 1.5 and 1.5 to get a bit more reasonable size for these textures.
I'm uh, just gonna make sure the highlight compression is set to 1 and contrast something like 1.5 and this is what we get. Let me just show you a clear final render of this shader. And here is our nice uh, realistic plastic shader. And if we want, we can simply create a, let's say a green plastic shader by adjusting diffuse and scatter colors. So let's duplicate the material in the materials window and drag it into the node material editor and assign it to the shader ball. Change the diffuse color to this green color with the RGB values of uh, 64, 156, and 46. And a lighter, less saturated green color with the RGB values of uh, 106, 213 and 90 for the scatter color. Just to make the subs for scattering a bit more obvious, we can increase the radius to five centimeters in this case. And I'm gonna set the contrast back to one in the frame buffer. Now let's see what we get. And here is our green plastic shader. Let me show you a higher resolution render for this shader. Here it goes. Next, let's create a wood or better to say a parquet shader. So I'll create a new Corona material and assign it to the shader ball. and make sure the interactive rendering is running. Load this texture called wood underscore parquet dot PNG and connect it to the diffuse color. Set the tiling back to one and one to get a bit more reasonable size again for this particular texture and set the reflection level to 100%. Uh, Fresnel IOR in the vicinity of 1.5, uh, you know, 1.6 ish, maybe a bit higher. Uh, let's try 1.65 in this case, just to get a bit more equal reflectivity on the entire surface. I'll load this map called wood underscore parquet underscore bw underscore zero two and connect it to a corona color correct map and connect the color correct map to the reflection glossiness. There is just too much contrast in the reflection glossiness map and I want the bright and dark values to be in a closer range together. So let's decrease the contrast in the color correct map to something like 0.45. And to make the reflections a bit rougher, let's darken the map a bit by setting the brightness to negative 0.05. Now connect the original map to the bump input and set the bump amount to something like 2%. We can just set the highlight compression to the default one and the contrast maybe something like 1.5. And uh, here is our kind of parquet shader. Let me show you the high resolution render as well. So here is our beautiful, touchable, realistic parquet shader. On to a concrete shader, which is very similar to the wood shader. So create a new Corona material and assign it to the 
shader ball and load this concrete underscore zero one underscore D and connect it to the diffuse map. Set the reflection level to 100% and Fresnel IR to maybe 1.7 for this case. We can set the reflection glossiness to about 0.5 uh, before connecting any map to it. Now connect the concrete map to a Corona color correct map. And increase the contrast to around 1.5 to add a bit more contrast to the map and connect it to the reflection glossiness. And you can adjust the color correct map and make it brighter to get a shinier concrete or make the map darker to get a diffuser concrete shader. Connect the original map to the bump input and set the bump amount to maybe 10-20%, probably 20% and let's see what we get. I'm just going to increase the contrast in the frame buffer to something like 2. And here is our shader. Let me just show you the higher resolution render as well. And finally some metal shaders. So I'm going to create a new Corona material and assign it to the geometry. Let's start uh, with a chrome shader. Uh, for metals, normally you don't have any diffuse, so we can set it to zero or disable it completely. Obviously, this is for pure metals. Uh, I'm going to set the reflection level to 1 or 100% and Fresnel IOR to 999. In the frame buffer, set the highlight compression maybe to about 2 and contrast to 1.5. And here is our basic metal shader. If you want to make the surface a bit more matte, a bit more rough, we can decrease the reflection glossiness. And if you want to add some smudges, scratches, fingerprints and stuff like that, we can connect a map. Uh, to the reflection glossiness input. So in this case, uh, load this map called BW1 and connect it to the reflection glossiness input. And you can obviously use your own map that can be, you know, better for this particular render, but we're just going to be using this BW1 map that we have available. Now we get this very kind of rough metal surface because the map is a tad dark. So let's add a Cinema 4D filter map and connect the texture to the shader input and connect the filter map to the reflection glossiness instead. Enable the curves in the filter map and increase the dark values to 0.7. Now those dark pixels get brighter and we're going to have a less rough surface. And I want to decrease the bright values to around 0.925 so the brighter pixels will become a tad darker and therefore the shinier parts will be a bit rougher in our material. Let's increase the highlight compression maybe to about uh, three and connect the reflection glossiness map to the bump map input as well. And set the bump amount to a very low value like 0.05%.
and that's our basic metal shader. Let me show you the higher resolution render as well. Uh, for this render, actually, I just set the noise limit to something like 4% and um, started the render. If I wanted to make a gold material out of this, I just need to adjust the reflection color. So I'm going to duplicate the shader in the materials window and drag it to the node material editor and assign it to the shader ball. Set the reflection color to a fairly desaturated yellowish color with the RGB values of 255, 227, and 147. And this could be our uh, gold shader. And here is the high resolution render as well. For something like copper, uh, so let's duplicate the shader and assign it again. Change the reflection color to a desaturated orange with the RGB values of uh, something like 255, 175, and 147. So for different metals, simply change the reflection color and you would get a really realistic result. Probably the colors that we're using right now are just a bit too saturated and for more realistic results, we probably need to actually use more desaturated neutral uh, colors. But, uh, you know, we're just trying to show off these parameters and how to work with them. So you can obviously adjust these par uh, colors and parameters on your own. Let me now show you the high resolution under uh, for this copper material as well. So there you have it. I think it's enough for this lesson and for the Corona material in general. See you in the next lesson to learn about another Corona material. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for Cinema 4D. It is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.